Hi everyone. So happy to join you in this online church experience. Um I don't know about you but I enjoyed yesterday. Um we went out as a church for an outing. We had the whole day to ourselves. We were near a beach. Um we had some pool time. It was an enjoyable experience overall. It was so good to just fellowship with each other, get to know each other a bit more and believing that in the coming days we'll get to see many of you, many of you who are online. Um if you ever come to Chennai, you're most welcome to church. Even as we get into today's time of worship, can I just direct your attention to Psalm 79, just one verse in it, just for us to get a bit of perspective as we step into the presence of God. Psalm 79 verse 13, but we your people, the sheep of your pasture, will give thanks to you forever. From generation to generation we will recount your praise that as we come before God today, we will come in all humility saying, "Lord, you are the shepherd, I am the sheep." and i just want to come with gratitude and praise before you and and let our intention be that we will tell generation after generation those who follow us it could be our spiritual children or um you know our our own children but that we would be conscious about telling them of what god has done for us let's not keep quiet about what he's done and even as we get into his presence even as we worship him can we keep that at the forefront can we keep gratitude at the forefront let's worship him together We are glad that you could join us today uh, in this worship, and uh, whatever the season that we are into, and whatever is happening in our life, we serve a God who who makes all things beautiful in His perfect time. And uh, can we uh, come with a heart full of thanksgiving for what God is doing in and through our life, for every little things. that we can and cannot see can we bring our thanksgiving to this god who deserves all that we can bring before him at this time let's sing with a grateful heart we thank you lord one thing that i want to say thank you lord thank you lord for all you've given to me for all the blessings that i cannot see Thank you Lord Thank you Lord with a grateful heart with a grateful heart with a song of praise with an outstretched arm I'll bless your name Thank you I just want to thank you Lord Thank you Lord I just want to thank you Lord Thank you Lord For all you've done in my life You took my darkness and gave me your light. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You took my sin and my shame. You took my sickness and healed all my pain. Thank you Lord Thank 
thank you Lord with a grateful heart with a song of praise with an outstretched arm I'll bless your name thank you Lord I just want to thank you Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can we open up our mouth? and just tell him lord thank you jesus thank you lord for the healing that i receive lord father thank you jesus for the light that you have shown in my darkness lord father i thank you lord lord for all that you have done what can i bring before you lord jesus hallelujah who else the rocks cry out to worship whose glory taught the stars to shine Perhaps creation longs to have the words to sing But this joy is mine With a thousand hallelujahs we magnify your name You alone deserve the glory the honor and the praise Jesus this song is forever yours a thousand hallelujahs a thousand more who else would die for our redemption Whose resurrection means I'll rise There isn't time enough to sing of all you've done But I have eternity to try With a thousand hallelujahs we magnify your name you alone deserve the glory the honor and the praise lord jesus this song is forever yours a thousand hallelujahs a thousand more praise To the King of Heaven, praise for He rose. Now He reigns. We will sing forever. Praise to the Lord, to the Lamb, to the King of Heaven. sing forever with a thousand hallelujahs we magnify your name 
You alone deserve the glory, the honor and the praise. Lord Jesus, this song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs, a thousand more. A thousand hallelujahs, a thousand more. We lift your name, Father. We lift your name, Jesus. Be exalted, Lord Father. Work in and through us, Lord Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you. We adore you. We we give you all of our praise, Lord. We give you all of the honor, all of the honor. Father, we just hand it to you. We take away, Lord, from from our forefront, from our focus, everything that is about us. And Lord, we magnify your holy name. We lift you up, oh Father. Lord, even as we have been worshipping you, Father, I pray that each of us will be more mindful of your presence. Each of us will be more in touch with your power, oh Father. I pray we will stop living powerless lives. I pray instead, Lord, we will tap into you, the source of all power. Holy Spirit, empower your people. Holy Spirit, fill your people. Father, we just pray right now for the whole world, oh Father. We pray for the parts of the world that are war-torn. We pray that you will restore those people. You will restore the nations. Father, I pray for nations that are torn up because of financial crisis. Father, I pray that you will come through, that leaders will have wisdom and knowledge. Father, we pray that the inflation rates around the world will, will begin to drop, that it will not become difficult for people to make an existence. Father, I pray very specially, Lord, for the destitute, the homeless, the orphaned. Father, we just pray that, Lord, your hands, Lord, would envelop them, would hold them. Lord, I pray that the church around the world will rise up in these times, Father, in prayer. And Lord, and also on the field, stepping out into those areas and ministering to the hurting of Father. Lord, I pray right now for India. We just bless our land. We bless our leaders. We bless every people group. And Father, we pray for unity, O oh Father, within our country. We pray, Lord, for your presence to permeate every space. Father, we pray that you will work in and through our people. Father, we pray very specially for the Church of India. Lord, we pray for unity. We pray for love. We pray, Lord, for oneness of hearts and minds. I pray that there will be a revival around India, oh Father, that there will be an urgency and a hunger for you. Father, I pray very specially right now for every person who's watching, wherever there is a need, we believe that, Lord, you are touching them right now. We believe that they will experience healing in their bodies. We believe they're going to experience healing in their minds, O oh Father. We pray, Lord, for people who are suffering with backaches, O oh Father, to be restored in Jesus' name. We pray, O oh Lord, for those who have been having issues that they cannot talk to anyone about. Lord, I pray that they will cry out to you to today, that they will see an answer, Father. They will have an intervention from you. Father, I pray right now for those who are at the edge, Lord, who have no clue what is going to happen next. Father, I pray that you will come through for them. Father, I pray that you would help them, Lord. I pray they will not give up hope. They will run to you, the source of all our hope, O oh Father. Continue to be with each one of us, Lord. Help us. Enable us to live lives that are worthy of your calling. Help us to live, Lord, and stand in good standing with God and with man. Help us, O oh Father, to walk with conviction, O oh Father. Help us to live, O oh Father, with power. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Even as we get into God's word, I just want to wish every one of you a very uh, happy Independence Day. And as citizens of this great country, it is our duty to uphold our land in prayer, uphold our leaders in prayer, and also to continually, in our own way, foster unity amidst so much of diversity. So let's just um, believe that God has great things in store for our nation. Even as we get into God's word, it's our joy to have Reverend Paul Anbu. Um, he's one of the associate pastors at St. Andrew's Kirk, Chennai, join us. He's going to be sharing the word of God with us. Uh, we love Paul, Beulah and their children, Andy and Adora. And even as you listen in today, can you just be really expect expectant of what God is going to be speaking to you? You may be in the middle of a battle. You may be coming out of one, maybe heading into one, wherever you are. I believe this word is for you. 
Hello everyone, greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to everyone at Via Zion. It's such a joy to come and minister. I'd love to be in person with you all and see you all, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, we still are connected with this one name, Jesus, and he still binds us together. Uh, thank you for the many who've been praying for our family as well. Um, so I bring greetings on behalf of uh, Beulah, my wife, and our children also. Uh, so this morning as uh, um, we come to the presence of God, I'm going to leave a promise, then pray and move into the message. The promise comes from the Old Testament passage, Exodus 14, 14. The Lord promises his children in the midst of a battle scene. And this is what he says through Moses. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Shall we pause for a minute of prayer and then move into the message? Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful covenantal relationship you have with each one of us. The one you started, the one you hold in your hands, and the one that we are safe in, O oh Lord. So we thank you, Lord, for you have called us your children, that you have a plan and a purpose for each one of us, that you have seen our challenges, our battles, and this promise as we remember this morning, Lord, that you would add it to the many you've already given to us. The Lord who says, be still, I will fight your battles. And I pray, O oh Lord, that as we dig deeper into this promise and what it meant for your children back then and what it means to your children, us, today, I pray that you would reveal your Holy Spirit would speak life into our lives. Oh Lord. Bless this morning devotion for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This promise seems very odd uh, to me and out of this promise in the next few chapters out of Exodus 14 and onwards as it goes, um, Moses would build an altar and he would call that place a very unique name for God. He gives God a name, Jehovah Nissi, he calls. So he discovers or rather the uh, this special group of people, these Hebrew people that God had chosen uh, to pour his love out and to show to the world that he is God through Israelites would discover this side of God. God becoming their banner. Jehovah Nisi, God their banner. So today morning, what does it mean for God to be our banner? You know, you look at banner, there's a lot of flag that goes around. Uh, very soon, we're going to be celebrating a milestone on the August 15th. And I'm one of those people who are really proud to be an Indian. This is the place God has blessed us with. Each of us, God has chosen a family and a place. And in his ordained way, we are a part of this country. So we are really proud. Every time I see a Indian flag flying out high, it really makes me proud that this is God's ordaining that is happening in my life. So as we celebrate, uh, we will be talking about this flag of God, this God, our banner. You know, Jehovah Nisi, God is my banner. This name is declared in the context of a battle. This battle that we are reading about in Exodus 14. In the context of a battle, and when Amalekites in Exodus 14 come and attack Israelites, where Amalekites come and attack Israelites. If you read the scriptures, you will know that as these people are walking through the desert, Israelites are walking through the desert, Amalekites sneak in from behind and they attack them. It's a very unique situation. Why, you may ask? Because the Israelites have just been released out of captivity, out of slavery, and they are not ready for a war. They are not even a people of war. They do not have soldiers. They do not have a captain. They do not have any of that sort. In fact, they are just beginning to experience freedom under God's protection and they are walking out. Now, they were not experienced in war. They do not have a commander. All of this is true. Uh, they were basically a tribe of herdsmen, you can say. Uh, and nomads were moving from one place to another. As the presence of God moves, they were learning to move. And, uh, and, and, and so you, you, you understand that this people group is the people group that will have a mentality uh, of slavery still in them. Somebody placing their leg on their neck and telling them what to do. They're not even people who can think out loud, take decisions on behalf of them. They are traveling in a very unsecure or an insecure place, you can say. Why would that be? At the end of the day, in Egypt, even if they were treated so badly, they had a house to go to and they were protected with people. Or rather, the ones who protected them were the ones who were abusing them. 
very many times you see even in abuse there's a little bit of protection that's a bad way to say but even in abuse there's a bonding that happens and beyond this abuse it doesn't go the abuser and the one who are abused gets into a relationship and it's a very abusive relationship but at the end of the day they at least have food and water or whatever that is the abuser provides just so that they can abuse another time but here they are out in the desert place not just men alone they are out in the desert place without any cover around them they are with their spouses they are with their children they are with their stock they are with their uh, possession everything out there and there's absolutely no protection so these are trespassers traveling through the land of fierce fighting people around them and they are left completely vulnerable that's the word from egypt all the way they are moving outside and here's a group of people who come behind and attack them but they feel very vulnerable so a battle for these people really means a matter of survival life or death really means a matter of hope really means a matter of future these vulnerable people that is how the world should look at them that's how that's that's the reality side of them but the bible does not say that at all but the bible does not say that at all they are very special people because they are traveling in a very 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 special way what is so special about their travel because somebody special is with them simply they traveled with a pillar of cloud in the morning which is god's presence himself giving them the shade and the direction in the morning the cool protecting them from the desert and the sun's heat and then moving forward in the night he would turn into a pillar of fire providing them light and the warmth that is required and probably saving from the reptiles of the desert this people group these people group though vulnerable to the world's eyes they were special in god's eyes and that's the god they were beginning to experience like not in any of the previous hundreds of years they would have told stories of who this god is and generations after generations but they first hand get to experience this god and his presence there's this pillar who will move up in front and they will pick up their tents and move and when the lord encamps in a particular place they would stop and camp this is a nation lots and lots and lots of people walking together they did not fight their battle alone so when you and i celebrate this month of freedom of independence and we continue on god reminds us that we are not alone in this battle in our lives in the place we are in god is ordained and he is not some god who's far away he is pretty close to us and the promise that he gives to those people is pretty much true with us too in exodus 14 14 the lord will fight for you and he and you shall hold your peace it simply means the lord is going to fight for you stop fidgeting with god's plans and allow god to be god stop saying something of disbelief and and stopping god's plan start looking at god start looking at things through the eyes of god start start noticing who god is these people were not fighting their battles alone no matter how inexperienced they were later on psalms would mention this would capture in one of the psalms in psalm 46 verse 7 psalm says the lord almighty is with us god of jacob is our fortress the lord almighty the lord the host of angel armies is with us and that's a beautiful something that god has promised for us today even today as we walk through when we feel vulnerable lonely no one understands sort of situations this god is the same who does not change yesterday today and forever they are people who are vulnerable but they have a commander who's god himself no matter if they were outnumbered amalekites may have been many but these people may have been small no matter even if they are outnumbered in deuteronomy 28 there's a beautiful promise that they've already been given add it along with the exodus 14 14 promise in deuteronomy verses 20 chapter 28 verses 13 this is how it reads the lord will make you a head and not a tail if you pay attention to the commandments of the lord god that i give you this day and carefully follow them you will always be at the top and never at the bottom 
That's what God gives to them. And they are about to experience this promise coming true because this God who gave this promise is with them and he is about to make it true in their lives. They were outnumbered, but they were never underdogs. They were vulnerable, but they were never unprotected. This is what God can do when he is with them. When God becomes our banner, the flag under which we stand, then God takes care of us. No matter how fearful they felt inside, they must have held their children. They must have told their spouses to hide or whatever, but there's no place to hide. No matter how fearful they were of a loss, because this for them it's a life and death situation, their God was with them. They saw with their own eyes. This was God Yahweh, God Yahweh, their God who they heard about, who they worshipped all the while long, who they dreamt about one day will be their deliverer, their redeemer from this slavery. Or simply to say, this is Lord God, their banner. They are beginning to experience this before they will declare it out. You know, sometimes we have to understand also that God is our captain and uh, his armies continue to lead us forward. His armies continue to protect us. We don't see this. We don't see the spiritual dynamics so many times. We go out and we come back every day. But we are called to thank every night for the protection that we have not seen, but we have experienced. Simply coming back to our homes is absolutely God's blessing. And so we are called to understand and notice this God, our captain of angel armies with us. This God who brings us victory, even though Amalekites sneak from behind, even though our battles, even though the evil one sneaks from behind. Because that's who he is. He comes to rob, kill and steal. You are called to stay with God and understand. We are called to understand that this God overpowers and overrides evil. That's what he did on the cross too. This God who showed his love under this covenant to this people did the same thing on the cross for you and me too. And so this morning, we too are covered under this promise. In Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you. You need to be still. Now that word still is not just throwing away everything, sitting at home in the couch and watching TV. It's not what it really means to be still. As we understand, I want to unpack quickly two points for us. The first point is when God is our banner, the battle really belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. Let's move down. And the second point after this I want to uncover is when God is our banner, he equips and strengthens you for victory. He equips and strengthens us for victory. Let me move to my first point. When God is your banner, the battle belongs to the Lord. In Exodus chapter 17 verses 8 to 13, you see, like I mentioned, the Amalekites who came and fought with Israel in a place called Rephidim. In a place called Rephidim. And Moses and Joshua choose men. This is in verse 9 of Exodus 17. Choose men to go out and fight Amalekites tomorrow. I told you they are not experienced battle people. They are not commanders. But probably they chose the strongest men among them. Those who they thought were able to fight. But the other part of the verse is very unique and I want us to capture that. Moses said to Joshua and her, by the way, her is a he, if you understand the scriptures and if you read, that's on a lighter note. By the way, Moses says, not only choose men to go and fight out there, but tomorrow morning, I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hands. That's a very unique situation. There's a beautiful principle that God wants our people or God wants his people to see and notice and to put it in principle. This victory is experienced. The battle is the Lord's, but he's got a part for us to do. Moses chooses to pray while he assigns men to fight. Our fight in the world, our place in the world is not just physical and material fight alone but against the powers and the principalities of evil and God's kingdom. We are called to understand the spiritual dynamic. The success of a battle rests in the time of prayer for each one of us. So God calls us to come to him 
believing trusting when he says i will fight your battles you shall be still means you do not act on your own strength come to me i want to show you who i am that's what god says i want to show you that i am your banner i want to show you that i am god your captain captain of angel armies and i am more than sufficient to handle your problems i want you to experience me while you walk through these battles so the way to win the battle is not just fight with worldly weapons alone they are important our education is important our strategies are important our relationships are important all of those are sacred and god wants to redeem that but above all is our time with god this god who covers us with this covenantal love invites us in our challenges in the midst of battles to come and to experience him and his sufficiency in the middle of battle appealing on the hill is more important rather than fighting in the valley let me say both are important but the more powerful tool is appealing to god praying to god connecting with god on top of the hill mountain moses chooses to lift his rod and connect with god and as long as he lifts his rod there's victory down there and so we see this dynamic the battle is won in the spiritual realm and the victory is experienced in the earthly realm god invites you and me to come to him you know sometimes we we tend to understand we are more powerful than who we are in the new testament it begins to say you ought to think yourself rightly as who you are don't overthink of who you are and sometimes god call, reminds us that we are limited we are we are limited in our resources we are limited in the way we can connect we can fight our own battles carry our own problems and walk forward so really god wants us to understand as we walk through the battle that the spiritual battle is won and the, the battle is won in the spiritual realm and the victory is experienced in the earthly realm you know david also writes in psalm 127 about this he says unless the lord builds the house the laborers labor in vain what is the laborer's labor can they build the house oh yeah all it needs is bricks and cement and all of that to build the house in today's time it can and a lot of money of course we can build a house but the point of whole of all of that that is building a house is gone dry the peace of the house the welfare of the house everything is gone out of context out of eternal context and the purposes of god when god is not your captain your head So David says unless the Lord builds the house the laborers who build it labor in vain unless the Lord guards the city the watchmen stay awake in vain so you are called to understand the secret of a success of a home or let me say the secret of a well lived home is in the presence of God that's what happened that God's people are defined by God's presence it's not about their gathering it's not about what they do all of those things are the after effects of god being with them and so god wanted to remind his people back then that i am the one who matters the most come to me and that's what it means to our own selves when we go kneel down and put our hands up and say lord it's you it's not me running my life every time in this psalm 127 is beautiful to see that though there are several parts of the world that works towards protection ultimate protection comes when god chooses to make people his protectors in simple way unless the lord guards the city the watchmen stay awake in vain means unless you and i understand true protection comes from god and we become his army people standing up for justice in the heart of god that happens as we get to know god every now and then and i begin to experience his protection over me and i become his protector for somebody out there it's beautiful isn't it when god becomes our banner he teaches that he fights the battle through us and we get to see who god is victory is yours when you learn to listen to this god that's why prayer is important if you notice in this passage in exodus 17 God asks Moses to go on top of a mountain and do that. Why would that be? Why wouldn't he do it in the tent of the ark of covenant? Why wouldn't he do? Isn't that place 
the place that God restored for him to meet people. But why at this point in time would he ask him to go on top of a mountain? It's because of one reason I believe. is for Israelites to know that God is powerful and when you call he will answer and for Amalekites to see that this God of Israelite people is powerful enough. For the whole world to see who we really are, who God is, prayer is the only closet for us that God gives. A weapon of victory is prayer. When God says, I will fight your battles, he wants us to come back to him. Isn't it amazing? The battle belongs to the Lord and it's fought in heavenly realms. We are called to rise above and join those who, those who God calls along and to stay with him. You and I are called to learn to our captain. Listen to our captain. Come to him in prayer. You know, especially when you walk through battles, our times of prayer should increase. But that's a spiritual dynamic. And that's what we learn here. God taught his children to come to him. God taught his children that when they come to him, he never lets them down. So that's my first point. When God is your banner, the battle belongs to the Lord. Would you increase your time of prayer and your time of action as well? Moses, Aaron and Hur got people ready to go and fight. Yeah, that is important too. We will get ready to fight. We will do best, excel in what God has given to us. If it is studies, we will excel. If it is work, we will excel. If it is uh, talking to people, we will excel. If it is finance, we will excel. In every way, we will excel. God, God really wants us to bless us in those areas. But the true battle, the true victory is in the heavenly places and God calls us to come to him. Let me move to my second point. When God is your banner, he equips and strengthens us for victory. In simple words, God wants to use us or God wants to invite us to be a plan of his victory. His victory could be simply said and done and we could just be simply standing and watching it. But that's not his, his plan at all. In Exodus chapter 17, just like we read in verse 10, So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with the people of Amalek. And Moses, Aaron and Hur went up on top of the hill in verse 11, and so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let it down, Amalek prevailed. When God is your banner, you realize that your perspective of life also changes. Your lifestyle also changes. That's pretty much evident in the Psalm we read also, Psalm 127. The true power and the source of the power is not just you. You cannot sustain and withstand everything on your shoulders in this life. It happens. So God invites you and I in the midst of the battle to see the real source of power from God itself. In Psalm 127 verse 2, It is vain to rise up early and to sit up late and to eat the bread of sorrow. Or so he gives his beloved sleep. True rest comes from God. What are you running over and over? In the morning you get up, you run. In the evening you are coming so tired and you just fall flat and sleep in the bed. There's no more time for anything. Our work is becoming typically similar to the same situation in Egypt where Israelites were working and working and working and working and not able to enjoy God's situation at all. In vain you rise up early and sit up late. For what? And the sleep that you are getting is the sleep of tiredness. You come home. Today's average situation of someone who is in the urban uh, context is your shirt lines don't wrinkle. Your iron lines don't wrinkle at all when you come back home. It's exactly the same way. But when you come back home, your mind space is gone. You just don't have any space for your children or your parents or your brothers and sisters or even friends for that matter. And you come back to a bed of tiredness. But that's not what God says. Don't follow the ways of the world, he says, which leaves you with tiredness and restlessness. You know, we believe in doing the same things over and over again, hoping that there will be new results. We know that science doesn't say that. If you do the same things over and over again, you will get the same results over and over again. Isn't that simple? But so many of us toil over and over again with the same thing. With God, things can change. 
with god things can change in exodus chapter 17 verse 5 god told moses before they entered into the amalekite situation there was another situation god told moses when they had no water to take this rod and strike the rock in the mount horeb and water will come god simply uses the rod that moses had even before to say point it at the red sea and it will part god could have simply said at the snap of his finger he is so powerful he is sovereign he could have just breathed 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 his breath on the red sea and it could have it could have parted but in front of israel god chooses to tell moses to use what is in his hand to do a miracle and it does a mighty miracle happens they get to experience god like they never did later in isaiah isaiah 43:19 he would capture this that a god is their god who makes way in the desert place who gives them water where there is no water who makes desolate land into fruitful land how by god himself choosing to use the rod that moses had in his hand moses says i will stand on top of the hill and with the staff of god in my hands as the passage goes down now you see the rod of god is what moses uses what was in his hand you remember his conversation with god at the burning bush earlier on when god met moses and said moses i want you to start picking up your call you are a special baby set apart and you i want you to be the redeemer and moses says no lord i don't i can't i can't and uh, god said what's in your hand you drop that and he makes a miracle the rod in the hand turns as a snake serpent and he says pick it by its tail and moses picks it up picks it up by its tail and it becomes a rod and god shows to him that he is about to use what is in his hand as a part of the victory why would god do this why would god choose to give us blessings and use that as a plan of his victory in our battles why would he do that simply because he wants you and me to know that we are a part of the victory plan too moses is rod is now god's tool for victory so god can use something god has given to you as a gift as a part of victory in your life too moses is way of honoring god was to use what in was what uh, was in his hand while his trust and dependence was on god you see god is interested in having you and me as a part of his battle because the real victory for god in the battle is getting you and me to see who this god is who this god is the real victory for god is not all of them is not your enemy the real victory for god or the joy of god in the battle the victory for god in the battle is when he sees you seeing who this god is when your eyes are opened at that moment when you get to see who god is his power at manifestation using the small rod that god has blessed you with he could simply have said it and it could have been done was it not the same case with the stars when he spoke it to be was it not the same case when he separated the waters from the land didn't the fish listen to him right when he called it out to pick up jona or when peter was fishing and there were no fish in the boats and he said all the fish to come back into the net didn't the bread listen to him when he took it up and when he on the mount when he preached and he blessed it and he gave it to them didn't they multiply by themselves didn't the birds listen to him when they brought the ravens they brought meat to elijah everyone listens but for some reason at some points in time especially when you're walking through a battle god chooses to use what is in your hand to bring you victory we, we are called to understand that he equips our hands and life and strengthens what he has given as we walk through the battle you may be fighting a sickness you may be fighting a situation with your children you may be fighting even old age or you may be fighting an addiction you may be covering up some abuse that's in your life you may be fighting a bondage whatever it is god wants to see these very situations show you he wants to show you that he is your banner 
and he will become your strength he will deliver you but that the delivery passage is by strengthening you and using what's in your hands not just alone but with this god but with this god there's something else also happens and i want to close with this we all get tired no with fighting with our battles every day we keep fighting our battles and then at some point in time we come to a point where we cannot even pray i've been praying over the same things over and over again but god is silent i fighting the same battle it's just too big and we we tend to give up there are moments in our spiritual battle we get tired we go fighting the same battles over and over again every day all the day sometimes and we don't feel like fighting we don't feel like praying moses also came to a point like that the bible history says the war must have gone for close to 14 to 17 hours and moses's hands grew tired so his hands were going down he was almost 80 something when he was at this place and moses's hand grew tired and it was coming down and so when at that point god really did something really really beautiful and marvelous showing all of israelites and amalekites and us today that it means something to us aaron and her were there to support him they bring a big stone put it under his feet so he can sit down first second one of them hold the left one of them hold the right hand so he could support it up intercessory prayer or praying for ourselves or someone praying for ourselves is a beautiful call of god when the battle is going on the prayer for plan or or the plan for prayer should be increasing it goes on and god brings many people around to support in prayer that's a beautiful community of god coming together while moses aaron and her were interceding on behalf of these people on top of the mountain there's victory here while moses's hand was getting dull and weak there were two of the brothers standing there to help god strengthens us through bringing people to join us in standing together you know so many times we fight the battle and we think there's no one else but that's the community of god that's the power of church coming together where one supports another that's our identity under this flag we are his people we are his people we together are his people and there's a beautiful something that uh, god wants us to see as much as aaron and her are to moses you know we are supposed to be to someone else also when i say this point the easiest way to assume it is someone else should come to me to help that's a good thing to do yeah when we fight our battles god will bring someone be be assured that god has people of god praying for each of us and that's a beautiful something to come together and to pray for the city for others welfare and and that's a beautiful something the church can do but again i am one of those people who are called to support someone who's praying also to close with god asks moses to build a a, a memory so to say make memory he says build an altar and moses builds this in chapter uh 17 of exodus and verse 15 moses built an altar and called its name the lord is my banner for he said because the lord has sworn the lord will have war with amalek from generation to generation why build an altar why build an altar an altar is a place of testimony a memory make a memory tell your children tell people those are testimonies let your instagram let your facebook keep talking about testimonies of who god is to you that's one thing the second thing is why should i tell a testimony because i should be reminded that there's going to be another battle there's going to be another battle there's going to be another battle until i die and i be in the presence of the lord there will be battles and god will be the same god and victory is mine in all the battles god wants us to know that so it so i can remember that a god who gave me victory now is the same god who will give me victory later and so god chooses to tell us for the next time for the next generation for the next battle and for the next moving ahead i will be the same god with you that's the covenant keeping god so as i finish here's my second point and i'll remind you about the first point and i want to pray and finish when god is your banner he equips you 
and strengthens you for victory. That's my second point. Give God what's in your hand and be the person to support someone in prayer and make memories, make places of testimonies for others. The first point we saw is that when God is your banner, when God is our banner, the battle belongs to the Lord. He fights for us and he invites us to join with him. Let him lead us and give us the victory. Second, when God is our banner, he equips us and strengthens us for victory. He wants us to be a part of his victory plan and he wants us to be honored and as a part of all of this, know who he really is, show his power to us and lead us in experience in an experience of victory. Jehovah Nisi means you and I ought to remember that God is a covenant-keeping God. He never lies. He will lead us through. He's placed us in a specific place. He ordains a specific experience. And through that, the greatest victory is for God to be evident, for us to see who God is and experience who God is. Would you pray with me? Our dear Father in heaven, you are the same God unchanging yesterday, today and forever. We thank you, Lord, that on another mountain, you brought us victory by sending your own son, Jesus. He brought us victory over death, over sin, over bondages, that we don't have to fight our battles alone. We thank you, Lord, that you are God, captain of the hosts of angels, armies of angels. And your promise is that you will fight for us and you're asking us to be still in trusting you, to be still in listening to you, to be still in knowing who you are. And our true victory, O oh Lord, this morning you reminded us that is seeing you and your control, power, source in the midst of our battles, our challenges. So Lord, we bring our battles, our challenges, the ones we are tired of, not able to fight. The ones we think we are the best to fight. So thank you, Lord, this morning for reminding us that the battle belongs to the Lord and the victory belongs to the Lord also. And we obediently walk and do our parts when you continue to equip our hands, strengthen our hands and to reveal yourself in the midst of battle. How amazing, O oh Lord. When we think you're not there in the midst of our difficulties, you choose to be fighting on behalf of us. So I pray, O oh Father, for all of us walking with challenges, for all of us walking with battles, whatever that may be, that you would open our eyes to see you in the midst of our battles. And I pray, O oh Lord, if someone doesn't know you, someone doesn't know Jesus who's listening to this, I pray, O oh Father, that they will get to know this most powerful, most loving, most amazing God on earth and in heaven, O oh Lord. God of angel armies, God who brought victory to sin and death on the cross, God who becomes my personal redeemer, the one who redeemed Israel, I want to thank you, Lord, is the one who redeemed each one of us too. So we rejoice and we give ourselves to you. Throughout this month, throughout this year, I pray, O oh Lord, that we would learn to build memories. As we see and notice you, as we experience your victory, as you begin to strengthen our hands and use what's in our hands for our victory, I pray, O oh Lord, we'll build memories. Put words in our mouth to tell our friends, to tell our generations, to tell our families, to tell the world that you are God, Jehovah Nisi, God my banner, God our banner. And so we give ourselves to you. Use us for your glory. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. God bless each one of you. Even as we heard, I believe that you were as encouraged as we were, that we are not alone in our battles and that our battles will end with victory because of Jesus being right at the center. Can we just uh, believe this? Can we just go into this week with confidence? Even as you get into your week, whatever your week looks like, whatever you have planned, most importantly, remember this, that whoever finds Jesus finds life. Have an amazing week. God bless you.